Okay, this probably fits into the category of uh, the show and tell. And um, for the last bunch of years in my wallet, I've had this uh, double-sided note that Dad left for me in, I believe it was September 2013. And it was not long after he had bought the Studebaker. And roughly what this is, um, because he was going to be down in Michigan visiting with Nicole uh, during my arrival, I would be taking the Studebaker for the first time over to the uh, Picton Arm Drop Drags. And so this note was his attempt to tell me everything I might need to know about what shape the Studebaker is in and, um, you know, what's available, what's not, how to, you know, the switches and all that sort of stuff. Now, interestingly, this is a perfect example of a set of Bennett notes, which attempt to be as uh, complete as they can and... Uh, yeah, all the Bennetts are known for it. Dad's dad, Grandpa, uh, used to make notes like this if uh, yeah, we happen to be at the house alone or something like that, you know, things about the furnace or whatever it might be. And also before Grandma and Grandpa ever went on holidays, there would be master lists of things, you know, to do, to shut off, turn off the water, turn out, you know, very thorough. And so that's, uh, this is a perfect example of a uh, Bennett piece of documentation, if you will. So anyway, I thought uh, it might be kind of interesting just to go through and see what, remind myself what I was faced with in uh, September of 2013. All right, so it starts off here. Uh, won't be able to check the oil. There's no dipstick. When he first put this particular engine in the uh, Studebaker, there just wasn't room for a to get a dipstick in there. Uh, there is one right now, but it is still uh, really tight. And at this point, I think we had the headers on, and so that even uh, that created even less space um, for them than the than the iron manifolds. So yeah, there was no uh, there was no checking the oil. Obviously, that's something I would do before going on a fifty mile each way trip in a car that I'd never seen before. But uh, I had to trust him when he said the level should be okay. Um, he's saying here that he checked the transmission fluid already and, uh, the, uh, where to put the, um, it has kind of a funky little rad hose situation. So in the middle of the hose is the, um, is the filler. It's not on the dash or it's not on the, um, radiator, radiator itself. Uh, he's saying the heat gauge in the dash isn't working, uh, but there is one down in the lower left, uh, right in front of the emergency park brake. So there's a water temperature over there. The car runs reasonably cool. Later, I think he ends up talking about the uh, electric fan. But uh, as long as you're not stopped in traffic, um, you know, it runs at about 180. Usually after about 180, as it starts to get into 190, I usually flick the fan on. But uh, like I say, if you're moving, it's all good. If you're sitting uh, waiting to go up to the line at the drag race, you you have to run it or turn the car off. Um, oh, he's got the buttons on the left of the steering wheel there. Parking headlights and dash lights. Headlight dimmer. Yeah, so it's a. It's a standard Chevy steering column. I'm not sure exactly what it's out of, but uh, 70s, early 80s uh, Chevrolet of some type. So pretty standard stuff. At this point, the floor shifter was not in, so it still had a column shift. We later changed that out. And uh, buttons to the right of the steering column... Uh, torque lock up and never used it and I'm not sure that I've ever even hit it accidentally they're all unlabeled he says they're leave off yeah of course um, I don't even know what that is about uh, to be perfectly honest with you I mean I know it I know what it's saying but uh, I'm not sure if that's even a feature right now yeah so he mentions uh, where the electric fan button is uh, I love the fact that it says next two buttons to the right, not sure. Uh, he hadn't owned it long enough to figure out exactly what the fuck they do. I think there still is at least one that you toggle 
it does have a little LED to tell you that it's toggled, but there's no obvious, uh, nobody knows what it does. Um, oh, he's saying here, leave electric fan off unless uh, it starts to rise above 190. That's what I was getting at, like 185, 190. If I see it going into that territory, I automatically turn the fan on anyway. The only thing I hate about that is uh, sometimes it's, because the fan's relatively quiet, it's sometimes easy to forget to turn it off when you turn the car off and it'll quickly wear the battery right out. But uh, that's just normal. And the uh, far right two buttons are the electric windows. Open the small vents first, because the main, yeah, the, the main windows need to be assisted up and down. They do get off their track and um, they kind of stick and uh, yeah, it's especially on the passenger side. The the driver side one actually works not too bad, but the passenger side one's always been weak, and I try not to put it down. I have put it down before, you know, not thinking, and uh, had a bitch of a time getting it back up. Uh, he's got here where the trunk lever is, which is right in the middle, and it kind of swings to the left. And it's a custom latch, so yeah, you wouldn't know that if you hadn't heard about it. And... Uh, The, uh, there's a big homemade wrench he's talking about here, which takes a really large center nut off that holds the wheel covers on. I don't have those wheel covers on, and I haven't done since I've owned the car. Still have the covers, and uh, the wrench is still in the trunk there. It's a pretty funky little thing. It's kind of like a knock-on, knock-off uh, wrench that you'd get, like on a um, some kind of low rider that has a you know a, a center, a single center nut. So it's a little bit like that, but it's custom size, and uh, yeah, who knows. And then underneath those, he's talking about uh, just 5-bolt Chevy patterns. It is ultimately a Chevy S10 underneath anyway. Uh, gas filler battery and trunk. Good to know, although, you know, obviously I would see that when I was there. I, s I see I only get gas tank 3 quarters full. Uh, yeah, the gauge is not, the gauge has never been accurate. And he's just basically telling me here that he doesn't know what kind of mileage I can expect. And I think in the first version of that uh, engine, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Uh, with those two four barrels on it and shit like that, uh, yeah, we were getting about nine miles to the gallon, I think, when I checked it one time. Nine and a half, I think. So, yeah, not great. But um, that was a good thing to know because, I, you know, I knew that I had to have, I had to be able to get to the... Um, Drag races and back, and it's about a, well, probably eight miles round trip, I guess. So anyway, I made sure that I had uh, lots of gas. But the one thing is I came out on that very first morning on the Saturday of the drag race, and the uh, the rear passenger tire was completely flat or just overnight. And uh, never did find the source of it. It still is a slow leak, but it's a slow leak that takes a couple of months to go right down to nothing. So... Uh, uh, something I never have figured out yet. The tires are very old and shitty. They actually need replacement very badly. So really, there's been no point in me trying to figure out where the uh, tire situation is. When he was writing this note, he didn't know that because uh, he had never encountered a flat on it as yet. So I had to tell him he needs to update the note to uh, say watch the uh, watch the air in the driver's side rear. Yeah, on the second page here, uh, he mentions the gas pedal is stiff, carb linkage. You know, it was either hitting or it was the wrong geometry kind of thing. That, that's been a common problem. I think we've, we've got it licked finally, but we spent hours trying to get that whole thing working. And, of course, it also has a common um, Chevy TV cable. Some people call it a kickdown uh, for the transmission. Um, and that wasn't causing the um, stiffness, but... The whole ratio of how that cable pulls out in relation to the throttle position is uh, something we had to spend a shit ton of time on. Um, sometimes when you ease off of gas to idle, idles fast, faster than desired. So he wanted to see it around 1,000 or 1,100, 1,200 RPM. Uh, that's still something that occasionally is an issue. Now that we've got the cam in there, that idle quality is really suspect to begin with, so it's not something I really worry about. Sometimes it does idle higher than I would like as well. Um, I fooled around with the carb a little bit and, you know, improved a bit, but 
if you get it down too low, it'll just stall because the, the lobe separation is, is pretty extreme. Um, issues if one issue is if one then goes into gear hard and ready to lurch ahead or back, yeah. Uh, I guess it's just common. Quick kick on the gas pedal normally will bring it down. Yeah. Always keep foot on the brake when stopped, gear or moving shift lever from park to reverse, yeah. Uh, in particular, at that time, it, it did have a serious uh, kind of lurch to it. And I think he's about to get into it, but the brakes are stupid sensitive. When it has vacuum, that is. So it's got some pretty serious vacuum boost, you know, uh, brake pressure. But uh, now that the cam is all wonky or, you know, heavy overlap, the uh, you don't get any vacuum when it's idling. So the, the brakes almost don't work if you're just coming up to a stop slowly. But they work like a hot damn if you're going 90 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, enough to enough to really jolt you. Yeah, here you're saying there's no indicator on the uh, column shift there. That wasn't a problem. Most of us, uh, you know, know it by by feel anyway. But uh, he took the time here to remind, you know, which are the uh, drive second and low neutral reverse. Um, I haven't bothered, I didn't bother even the first time I went to the drag strip there to get into the lower gears or whatever, it just doesn't matter. I was using automatic drive. And here it says, watch brakes. They're power and stop on a dime. Easy to put the car on the nose, risk of stopping and going behind. <laughs> or go of the, uh, risk and stop and go of the car, you know, the car behind. Yeah, they are, they are touchy as fuck, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I never did lock them up, but uh, it really wants to. Yeah, the speedometer one is an interesting thing. The speedometer isn't accurate in miles per hour at lower speeds, 30 to 50, likely reads 5 to 10 miles per hour high. On the, What we found out later uh, in using my one of my phone GPS apps was that it appears as though somebody had um, geared the uh, speedometer to kilometers just to make things easy, even though it's not a kilometer speedometer, if you will. But perhaps there's a gear pack or something like that or a... Um, a conversion for the uh, yeah because as we found out we always just thought it was just inaccurate in the mile per hour range but really we were getting almost exactly what it would have been directly in kilometers um, so yeah interesting that you know once we learned that it's it's fine but um, I consider that to be a pretty odd thing to do but um, it does yeah it, it, it does help to not have to convert that in your head all the time I wouldn't bother to do it any of my other classic cars, but uh, yeah, new one on order. I wish I knew where that one was. Probably is that well, whatever went to Wayne's in the box that was left over of stuff. He had a whole whack. I had like new parts that he bought for both the Merc and the Studebaker in the far garage, and so there was lots of stuff left over at the end of it all. Anyway, in general, um, just a you know, just a pretty quick show and tell here of a. Uh, piece of Bennett documentation. Uh, I kind of like the way dad, you know, was thinking out. He wanted to make sure that, you know, he had communicated everything that he knew or whatever. He certainly didn't want to put me in a position where I was, you know, halfway to Picton and, you know, something broke down because I didn't know about the fans or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's good. I, I was glad. But even more importantly, you know, I've had this in my wallet since. And um, I just, I like little notes like that. And uh, I remember, you know, I have some of grandpa's too that some of those lists I told you about when they're about to go on holidays or whatever. And, I don't know, very interesting to read, I think, at this point in time. So, thanks for watching. Uh, just a little thing, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Have a video up. Um, well, I'm kind of working on one right now, um, but it probably won't be up until next weekend. We will talk soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.